Good afternoon and welcome to the One Heart 4 p.m. service. My name is Blair. For those of you who don't know me, although I think many of you have been watching this church service for a while now, and whether it's your first time or you've been with us for many months now, welcome. Welcome to church. One Heart is a cross-cultural, missional, and worshipping faith community in the life of the Uniting Church. We believe we've been given a mission from God to really make His kingdom glorious in this world that we're living in. And this church service that you're watching right now is part of how we try to do that. Throughout this pandemic, a lot of distress and a lot of uh, terrible things have been happening. And it's through these times that we really feel like we need to call out to God more than ever. And if you're tuning in today, we suspect that you believe that as well. So we really want to encourage to you and invite you to make this time your time with God, whether you're by yourself at home or watching with family, wherever you are, if you're on the go, if you're at the gym watching this on your phone, wherever you are, God is with you and we're with you as well. So one, welcome to One Heart. If you're not watching this at the official live stream page, we'd encourage you to go to www.livestream.oneheart.sydney. There you'll find this video, but with a few extra fun parts on the side. We've got a chat on the right hand side where you can message all the other people who are watching with you. Because as it turns out, you're not alone at all. We've got people watching this from all over the world, from all over different countries, not just in Australia, but in Singapore and in New Zealand and in Korea. And it's great that we can connect with each other at the same time. So why don't you head over there if you're not watching that there and say hello. We'd love to see all of you there. Uh, during the service, you'll see a few things pop up in the chat, one of which is the invitation to offering. If you're a regular member of the church, we'd love to invite you to join us there. But please don't feel forced to do so. It is something that we ask you to do out of the desire of your heart and your desire to serve God and the church. But that will appear right about now as a little box in the chat. Uh, throughout the service, we also have different parts of the service. So for example, right after this, we have the worship team leading some great songs for you to really get into the mood to think about God. And please use that time to, to call out to God. Uh, the words will be appearing at the bottom of the screen in case you're not familiar with any of the worship songs today. We then have a brief message from Pastor Ace where he'll be preaching from the Bible. That takes us to about five o'clock and we have lots of fun little small groups there for youth, for young adults, for the Korean commun community and for primary school kids. So those will be on Zoom and we'll be sharing the links to those in the chat on the right hand side. If at any stage you miss things like that and you need that link again, please just connect with us using the live prayer button at the bottom of the screen and our friendly ministry team will connect with you and we'll be happy to share any details. Uh, One Heart is also an active community throughout the week. We are on Instagram and Facebook too and we also have a Friday night prayer every Friday at 8 p.m. on Zoom. If you're not familiar with this we'd love to invite you just to come along and observe and be part of it um, but it's something that we do every week to pray to God and also to spend some time with each other. We are more than just a gathering on a 4 p.m. Sunday. We are more than a building of course. We are a community and we're that community through throughout the week as well. So now I'd like to invite you to really enjoy the next hour, but before you do, uh, we want you to, we, we want to encourage you to use that chat function. So I've got a bit of an icebreaker question for you. I'd like to ask you to name one thing that you're good at. If you're a bit of a modest or shy person, this is your opportunity to build up your self-confidence. So why don't you let us know what you are proud of about yourself or what, what gifts God has given you that you're good at and we'll see those messages in the chat on the right-hand side. And I'll see you in church. Thanks for connecting, and God bless you today.
Welcome to another online service here at One Heart. Um, thank you for joining us online. Um, I promise you there will be a time when we all gather together for offline. So um, just hang in there for a little bit. Um, so before we go into this praise or worship, I want us to all um, kind of ask the Holy Spirit and for God to be with us no matter where we are. Um, especially in these um, difficult times, I want to pray um, and invite all of you guys to confess and to really um, praise the Lord who never changes, who never fails, um, who has our hope, our living hope. Um, so if you could all join us in prayer before the praise of worship, um, let us all pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you again for this time of worship. Um, thank you again for all the brothers and sisters that you have sent um, so that we can all gather together and praise you and worship you and to listen to your words. Um, Father God, we lack in so many ways, but you give us constant hope because you are the hope of the nations. You are our living hope who never fails. Um, you are always faithful. We can always trust in you. So Lord, really, we are gathered here today to um, proclaim this and to confess this out of our hearts and to really praise and worship you and to lift your name up high. Um, so please hear our praises. Um, please hear our worships towards you and our prayers um, and be with us, send your Holy Spirit um, so that we can really connect with you. In, in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Let us all sing Jesus, Hope of the Nations. for all who mourn. You are the 
just how far we've come, knowing that for every step you were with us. Kneeling on this battleground, seeing just how much you've done, knowing every victory is your power in us. Stars and struggles on the way, but with joy our hearts can say, 
one who set me free. Hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my living hope. So today's Bible reading is from Isaiah chapter 22 verse 15 to 25 this is what the lord the lord almighty says go say to this steward to shebna who is in charge of the palace what are you doing here and who gave you permission to cut out a grave for yourself here hewing your grave on the height and chiseling your resting place in the rock beware the lord is about to take firm hold of you and hurl you away O you mighty man, he will roll you up tightly like a ball and throw you into a large country. There you will die, and there your splendid chariots will remain, you disgraced to your master's house. I will dispose you from your office, and you will be ousted from your position. In that day I will summon my servant, Eliakim, son of Hilkiah. I will clothe him with your robe and fasten your sash around him and hand your authority over to him. He will be a father to those who live in Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. I will place on his shoulder the key to the house of David. What he opens, no one can shut, and what he shuts, no one can open. I will drive him like a peg into a firm place he will be a seat of honour for the house of his father. All the glory of his family will hang on him, its offspring and offshoots, all its lesser vessels, from the bowels to the from the bowls to the, all the jars. In that day, declares the Lord Almighty, the peg driven into the firm place will give way. It will be sheared off and will fall, and the load hanging on it will be cut down. The Lord has spoken. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lisa, for your help and beautiful voice of reading the passage. And again, um, we uh, want to encourage you all to uh, prepare your Bible and use your Bible to reflect and understand and uh, make few list of what you can practice um, according to the passage, because this book of Isaiah is telling us and and teaching us how how we can live um, as a faithful people of God um, during this period of um, worldly sin and chaos um, where Israelites were going through. And I think this is really a um, relevant passage for all of us these days who are living in this crazy world with COVID-19 and all the other personal issues and problems. This book really guides us and genuinely teaches us how to keep our faith in every single circumstances and situations and allowing God's Spirit to come and inviting ourselves to be part of kingdom of God. That's why I have uh, given the title for this series, The Kingdom of God. And this is um, already part five. And the key word for today's sermon is pride. Pride. Um, our brother Blair has asked us this icebreaker question, what we are proud of, what you are good at, what you are proud of. And we sometimes think this word pride is very positive. And, and optimistic and joyful that we want to be proud of something. And the definition of this word is your sense and feeling of excitement and achievement from one's successful achievement. And the Bible sometimes talks about this sense of pride as something that, that can against to the Spirit of God that we can sometimes lose our control to be part of God's kingdom. That's what today's Bible reading talks about. This is one of very sad passages in the Bible because after we uh, learned that God's, God's hands is now 
um, stretched out to other strong nations and, and he will control over those strong countries around Israel. And we, we, we have been learning and hearing this prophetic voice of Isaiah. is all about bringing this new hope, new heaven and revival back to chosen people of God, Israel. But today's Bible reading, if you have read the whole chapter 22, now this God's judgment and His punishment and His test is now in Judah, Israel. I think verse um, from 15, now we hear this interesting um, name in, in today's Bible reading. And His name is um, Shepna, Shepna. And this name is mentioned as a palace administrator. In verse 15, he says, This is what the Lord, the Lord Almighty says, Go say to this steward, to Shepna, the palace administrator. Shepna, this person, is a well-known, successful person in this nation, Judah. He served as steward and treasurer and over the house of the king, and built himself. He built himself a tomb uh, among the mighty. So he treated himself as one of other kings. And he has took this position, very high political position of this nation, Judah. But, but when you keep reading this passage, you realize that eventually the Lord will hurry Shebna away violently. The Lord will take tight hold of Shebna and surely cover him with shame. The Lord will surely roll Shebna in a bundle and toss them like a bull into the large country. Eventually, Shebna will die and all his strength and prize in a large country. Shebna is a disgrace to his master's house. Shebna will be removed from his position and leadership. That's what we read today. Shebna used to be in a very high position and blessed and successful position. And eventually, the Lord, our mighty Yahweh God, has removed removed him from his position. And we should ask why. Why these chosen people of God, Israel, had to hear this voice of judgment and prophecy that you will be destroyed, you will be removed. We as a people of God, we as a Christians, we always pray for God's extra blessing. Is that right? We always pray for this extra blessing in our study, in our families, in our job and career. In many places, we believe that God is going to bless us. And He's going to give us good sense of pride in our daily living, with a good sense of achievement and success. But today's Bible reading warns us that even though you are a chosen people. Even though you have received this free gift of salvation, there is something we need to be careful of, not to be taken away from the kingdom of God. This is a very serious warning message for all of us as a chosen people, as a blessed people, as a people who have received this gift of salvation. We all believe in Jesus Christ, and in the beginning of our journey as a Christians, we, we are all overwhelmed with the fact that we, there's, we, 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 we are not deserved to receive this free gift of salvation, but this unconditional grace and love has reached to us, and God's hands has reached to us, and we grabbed it, and we, we started experiencing this new heaven and new earth and new peace in the kingdom of God in our daily journey. And we are all so grateful. And we started experiencing a, a lot of supernatural blessings. God answers our prayers during the worship services and during special conferences and camps. We all have these experiences of special blessings. And then God always wants us to keep our faith 
and fix our eyes on God instead of chasing our sense of pride without God in our daily life. Why Shebna had to be taken away from his successful and blessed position? Because he was proud of himself. He started believing his power that he has gained by himself. He started expressing that I do not need God anymore. I don't need to listen to God anymore. I don't need to acknowledge his presence anymore. He started chasing and believing his own power and pride. That's what happened to Israel. These chosen people started chasing other powerful countries rather than God. These chosen people started listening to worldly voices rather than commandments of God. That's what happened. And we are all now in this space today to understand how we can continue to worship our God with our humble heart. Book of Deuteronomy, chapter 8, verses 10 through 14. Please open your Bible if you have your Bible with you. Deuteronomy, chapter 8, verses 10 through 14. It says, When you have eaten and are satisfied, praise the Lord your God for the good land He has given you. Be careful that you do not forget the Lord your God. This is what we learned last Sunday. Our key word was remembrance of God, remembrance of Jesus Christ. Then if you have eaten and if you are satisfied, you got to praise the Lord, your God, for the good land He has given you. In a contemporary way of understanding it, if you are satisfied with whatever you do in your daily journey, at the end of the day, before you go to bed, please take your time to praise your Lord, praise your God who provides you energy, strengths, opportunities, and chances that you could achieve those goals. That you can feel and enjoy your feeling and sense of success. We've got to be careful that we do not forget the Lord our God. And it, keep, it keeps going in verse 11. Failing to observe his command, his laws, and his decrees that I am giving you this day. Otherwise, when you eat and are satisfied, when you build fine houses and settle down, and when your herds and flocks grow large and your silver and gold increase and all you have is multiplied, Verse 14 is important. He says, Then your heart will become proud and you will forget the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. We as Christians, we as the children of God, to be able to continue to be part of the kingdom of God, this is something we got to remember. When things are going really well, when your families and your career, your lives itself started getting better and better and better, what you need to remember and be careful is not to be proud of yourselves, but to continue to remember what God has done for you and what God is doing for you. The original place where you have tasted who God is. That's what this book of Deuteronomy talks about. Book of Deuteronomy is given as a second law for Israelites. Like a reminder of how they need to live as a children of God. And it clearly highlights that you got to remember who God is. Who brought you out of Egypt. Out of the land of slavery. The original time and place where you have encountered God. I want us to think about where you have encountered God as your first time. When did you first feel this first love with God? 
When, when you were in dark places and going through down here and rocky journey, there was a moment and point of your life that you have encountered God and experienced this grace and love of God. And, and this unconditional love of, God, love of God has transformed you, has changed you. I have heard many testimonies and stories how powerful this love is. And with this love, with this grace, we became so much better person in the eyes of God as well as in our different contexts. And we started experiencing these overflowing blessings and sense of pride. And then when things are getting better, as he says, when your flock's growing large and your silver and gold increase, and everything what you have is start, started becoming multiplied. What we need to be careful is to keep ourselves in God, in God's kingdom. Not to be proud of ourselves, but to be proud of the power of the gospel. Power of the gospel that is given to us. Book of Leviticus, chapter 26, verse 19 he says, I will break down your stubborn pride. It is very direct. He says, I will break down your stubborn pride and make the sky above you like iron and the ground beneath you like bronze. So God really hates our own pride. We can tell. Because this pride gives us this sense that we don't need God anymore. And the kingdom of God, as we have learned, the kingdom of God is all about accepting and being under this reign of God and allowing the Spirit of God to sit in our driving position and obeying the word of God and commandment of God. That's what the culture of the kingdom of God is look like. But once we started chasing and enjoying and growing our own pride, it will cut off this overflowing blessing that we can be connected with this word of God and blessing with God. And we started becoming more proud and more proud and more proud of our words, our money, our knowledge, our, our skills. And then we, we will eventually lose our trust, our relationship, our connection with God. And this is what happened to many successful people of Israelites when you read the Bible. Who is the very first anointed king of Israel? After the long time or period of judges, Israelites started crying out to God, Look, God, we as a chosen people, you have chosen us to be blessed people of God, and then you, you blessed us to, to be the fathers of all nations. And now look, all, all, other, con uh, all other countries and nations to have their, their kings. And then we don't have kings. And God allowed. God blessed. God has answered their prayer and anointed the very first king of Israel. And who is it? Does anyone know? Chloe, who is it? Does anyone know? King Saul. King Saul. Who's the second king? King David. Who's the third one? Solomon. Who's the fourth one? There's no fourth one because the nation of Israel divided into two nations after Solomon. King Saul, when he was anointed... He was one of the most humble men of God. That's, that's why God has anointed him. King Saul was one of the most faithful young men of whole Israelites. But after he became the king of Israel, he started enjoying his own sense of pride, his kingship. Then he started losing his faith in God. And God had to remove him from his 
position as a king. And this person here, what, what we are reading, it identifies and represents this whole nation, Judah, Shebna, who are chosen and blessed and who are anointed to be in this very high position, now following his own pride. And he started praising himself and started treating himself as other gods, other kings, other mighties. And God had to remove him. So before we hear this voice of God, I will break down your stubborn pride. This message teaches us that we want to humble ourselves all the time. And not to be proud of ourselves, but to be proud of who Jesus Christ is. Gospel of John, chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. This is one of my favorite image of who we are. It says, I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. Why every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that, so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me. Verse 4 is very important. It says, remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. Verse 5, it says again, I am the vine, you are the, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. Now, we understand why it is so important for us to continue to be proud of what God has done for me, who Jesus Christ is for me, rather than being proud of my own knowledge and words and skills and money or whatever we have. Because everything is from God. When you try to look at fruits, you, you will find out fruits all the time on branches, not on the tree itself. But if those branches are not attached to the body of the tree, that branch, there's no life anymore. There's no way this branch can bear fruit. It's something like that. When we have vision and dreams to be successful and influential people in our communities and societies, God will answer your prayers. As he says, if you ask and whatever you wish, it will be done for you. It will be done for you. This is the word and promise of Jesus Christ. But the condition is that we will keep ourselves in Jesus Christ. In God, in God's kingdom. We will continue to worship God as our King, as our Lord. We will accept Him and allow Him to come and lead us and guide us as our King. And it will prove ourselves that I am a disciple of Jesus Christ. I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ. I truly believe that these days we need real disciples for this world to be transformed. The Bible says God seeks true worshipers who worship God in the spirit and in the truth. Can you imagine that our God started seeking and searching and chasing and finding 
true worshippers and disciples? Have you ever imagined that when Jesus started his public ministry, he started searching and chasing and seeking those possible disciples? And that's what God is doing. And the condition for us to remember today is that there is no my own pride in the kingdom of God. But the real pride is all about being proud of who our God is for me. The what he provides me. Our real pride is in Jesus Christ our Lord who died on the cross as an humble king. As a humble king. And Jesus, when he was facing to his time, very last time, to, before he sacrificed on the cross, he was asking God to move this cup if it's possible. But Jesus was not following his will. But Jesus was following God's will. That's how we can be proud of ourselves in God and in Jesus Christ. And then our God will continue to protect us and bless us and lead us. Then I know a lot of people are going through very challenging time these days. I know this um, incident of second wave happened in Victoria and now they are going through a very tough time. I think it is the very first time of experiencing this restriction of living within five kilometers and after 8 p.m. they can't go out. And this is crazy. Have you ever imagined that we're going to live like this? You know? All restaurants, when you go in, you have to scan this, what is that called? The, the, the barcode or, or the QR code. And then you have to put your details that people should be able to chase you and find where you are if something goes wrong. When I was a little boy, there was a rumor that when, when this world is, is moving to the end of its history, these things will happen. Now people will be able to scan you. People will be able to find you where you are. And I, I, I didn't believe it at all. No way. How? But this, that, that happened. Now, people can find you where you are. In this crazy world, what we need to keep in ourselves is our real identity as a Christian, as a child of God. That we need to keep ourselves in the kingdom of God. That we need to remember that this whole world when it goes very successful with their science, technology, and skills, and knowledge, and everything, we will keep ourselves humble, not to be proud of ourselves, but to be proud of who our God is. Because He is a hope of all nations. Jesus is a living hope. And we will follow Him day by day, and week by week until this day of new heaven and new earth comes. Amen. Let's pray. Gracious God, we are very grateful that your words are strong and clear and very directive to teach us how to live as your children. And Lord Father God, if we had our own pride in our heart, in our mind, we want to share and lift up our voice of prayer for the repentance. We want to turn around from our old life back to new journey with Jesus Christ. And we want to keep ourselves to be part of this kingdom of God. And we will continue to proud, be proud of our Jesus Christ. And Jesus, please give us hope. Please strengthen us to be able to overcome. 
all these challenges that we are facing to these days. May the Spirit of God continue to bless each and every one of us and lead us and guide us as we will humble ourselves and be proud of who Jesus Christ is and what he has done for us. In Jesus' name, we all pray. Amen. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of our Father God, and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and always. Let us go in peace to serve and love our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. mountain top looking just how far we've come knowing that for every step you were with us kneeling on this battleground seeing just how much you've done knowing every victory
Hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, 